line. We have commit and we have lift off at 2.13. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust and it has cleared the tower. Studios in South Central Georgia. This is the Don and Randy Show. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Is your stuff working? Yeah, my, my headphones work too. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Ten seconds in. Ten Bam. seconds in. Ba-doom. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. First, if you, personal best, I believe. I know. I'm just throwing it out there. Well, if you haven't figured out, this is the Don and Randy Show, also known as Jake and the Fat Man. Um, <laughs> welcome to another episode. <laughs> How long have you been holding that in? <laughs> you, you've been waiting since like last week to tell that joke, haven't you? I know. Actually, I thought about it this afternoon. I was like, mm, I wonder if he's going to get offended if I say that. I was I like, know. no. I know Randy. I'm, I'm fat? What? Oh, my God. Wait a minute. I thought you were Jake. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, anyway, I'm Donovan Adkiss, and your co-host of this here uh, a feeble attempt at a podcast about absolutely nothing, and uh, you, sir, are... Jake, apparently. You're Jake. I'm Randy okay. Meadows. Oh, anyway... If you don't already know, this is a weekly show where Randy and I just kind of sit around and talk bullshit, basically, about any and everything. Current events, whatever has been going on in our lives, what's been going on with our wives. Okay, wait a minute. No, we probably don't want to go there. Girlfriends? Eh, eh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe, kind of. I don't know. Anyway, we'd like to welcome everybody that's in the uh, chat room, our esteemed hyenas. All, uh, all two of you right now, but... <laughs> One of our longtime members is not going to be here tonight because he had a death in the family. So, of course, our heart goes out to him and his. Certainly. And, and I don't know where the other one is. That damn Shay. What's up with Shay? I don't know. He's starting to let me down, man. I don't, I don't understand. Have you offended him? I hope not. Have I offended him? I, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't have brought you into the chat. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, before we get started, I wanted to show you something. You know, I published two books. Well, I finally actually bought myself a copy, a physical copy of my book. Awesome. So it was like, you know. To Whose hold... silhouette is that? Uh, mine, I believe. Lee did the artwork. She does all the artwork on my books. If you look at podcasting year one with the baby in the headphones, she did that. That creeps me out, by the way, that picture. Not that one. You, in general, creep me out. But that. Well, good, good, good. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. But I appreciate that. The, uh, the baby with the headphones just looks weird to me. I don't know why. She's the one that came up with the idea. I mean, I understand the conceptually. Yeah. Well, you know, it was podcasting year one. It was, it's you know, baby steps. Infant, yeah. The, yeah. the idea is, is if I do a year two... You actually have, like, a toddler yeah, with the headphones growing, on. Yeah, yeah, I'm digging it. And I've been thinking about doing that. I've been thinking about doing a second book. Really? Uh-huh. Would I be in that book, maybe? Is there any chance of that? There'd, there'd be a picture of what what not to do as a podcaster. <laughs> you know, this is the dude. He doesn't need to be podcasting, trust me. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. He just learned, learned what a lower third is. He just learned what it is. All right. Well, as I normally do, let's start off with what I have learned. This week. <clears throat> sure. Are you ready? Because I got another special thing for you. <laughs> Yay. All right. Here we go. Men at 25 play football. Men at 40 play tennis. <clears throat> Men at 60 play golf. Have you noticed that as we get older, our balls get smaller? <laughs> that is what I have learned. Well, that's an awesome... Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's not really. Maybe not so awesome, but. <laughs> it's kind of true, though. I, I guess I, it is. I've never really thunk of it that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my balls are smaller than they were at 20, so. Anyway. <laughs> See, I get that joke. Unfortunately, I know that you have been clipped, and <laughs> I totally get that joke. Pop quiz. 
mental health question. Think about this. If there is a full bathtub and you need to empty it, which of the following would you use? A teaspoon, a teacup, or a bucket? I need the Jeopardy music going. A teaspoon, a teacup. Or a bucket. Or a bucket. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess a bucket. Why would I not use a bucket? Neither. You just pull the damn plug. So which institution do we need to check you into? <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> Well, let's see what you've been up to for the past week. <laughs> Nothing. You have totally been <laughs> bored out of your mind. Uh, well, you know, it was a short week. Well, We yeah. had Memorial Day. Not Memorial Day. Shit. What's in this coffee? <laughs> we this had segment late... is sponsored by Bailey's Irish Cream. <laughs> no, that was that was Monday. No. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, we had uh, Labor Day. Labor Day. You forgot the wine. I did. They just hit me. When you, <laughs> we started talking booze, I forgot the wine. Ah, uh, well, there you go. Watch this. Uh-oh. Are you going to do a reminder? Yeah, if I can figure out how. Yours does support S-Voice, right? <laughs> really? You're going to ask me something like that? Well, yeah. Here's what you do. Yeah, I just say. Yeah. Set reminder, 7 p.m., bring how do, wine. How do I get to it? What do I do to do that? Well, on mine, I've Mine's got Mine's under Google. Like, I can go to Google and hit Google. Well, yeah, I guess you can do that. But mine said, I set mine up so that if I do a double tap on my home button right here, like, and it pops up. Set reminder, 8 p.m. tomorrow. Call Randy. Yes. God, she sounds hot. Saving your task. Okay, I saved it. <laughs> you know, this makes me want to have sex with my my <laughs> Galaxy S4. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I don't know. Now I got to go in and delete this thing. I don't know how. I don't know if I can verbally delete. A I mean, reminder. you can call me tomorrow at eight. I will be around. I will be in town. I'm not entirely sure why I would call you at eight tomorrow afternoon, but. Me either, but you mm. can still call me. I mean, anyway, well, that that was the technology segment of the show. How to use S Voice, which is a competitor to Siri. Yeah, I, when I did the the reboot, the update last time, mm -hmm. I, I had it where you know you hit it th the home button three times and you close all of your apps that are open and stuff like that. And really, I wonder if my, my I wonder if mine's set that way. One, two, three. Well, two times used to give me yes voice, but... Um, I just hold the button, and it gives me the task manager, and then I go through and close and close and... Yeah, that close. too. Yeah, mine's not doing a triple threat, so... I don't know, but I, uh... What the heck? Google Play Music. I don't know that I've ever used that. Google Play? The, the music, music player, yeah. yeah. I've got... I, I uploaded... Um, I don't know how how many songs that I've got. It, it The thing is just like iTunes. I mean, you upload the crap into the cloud. Then you can upload the crap into the Amazon cloud. You can upload it into the Google cloud. I'm about clouded out. I mean, it's kind of cloudy. Yeah. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I set mine up, and I, I when I went through everything, like it, you have to wake the phone up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, originally my my command was get on up, get on up. Right, that's what I thought. I was yeah. like, get on up. Well, so I recorded that, and now every time I say it, it will not respond. Like it, it won't. The voice mm -hmm. See, analyzer I didn't, won't. I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to wake up command because I was, I was too afraid that you know something might might happen. Like one day. I mean, that's just like... You get I was, a cold? <laughs> well, or, you know, I was actually in Google one day looking at something, and I just said the word... I was talking to somebody, and I said the word Google, and the freaking microphone just went ding and was and was listening to me talk, and I'm like... Oh, no. <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, it's cool, but... But anyway... Yeah, there's a cool... I am, I am looking forward to our Google... 
overlords. All right, here's here's some of the things we may get to tonight. All right. We've got an Illinois couple married for 71 years, die within hours of each other. We have an actual living, breathing human being who actually won the damn publisher's clearinghouse. Do you believe that crap? <laughs> what? Does that still exist? I don't know. Uh, yeah, apparently. Um, if you're going to lay traps around your Mary Jane, be sure to remember where they are. Oh, awesome. A woman steals her boyfriend's money. I'm not going to tell you where she hid it. There's a skyscraper that is creating a death ray that apparently melts cars and burns carpet. There's a Florida teacher who's facing firing for placing the cone of shame on her students. Man steals date's cell phone for refusing to go halvesies on the bill. <laughs> uh, the baker who lost their shop after refusing gay couple's wedding cake has a surprise reaction to the ongoing attacks. And those are the stories that we can try to get to tonight. So, curiously, out of all of those, which one would you like to start with? Oh, it does not matter. All right, let's let's go to the woman steals boyfriend's money. <laughs> Super. All right. That's called marriage, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, to a point. It, you're, you're absolutely right, to a point, yes. But in this instance, police in Tennessee say a woman severely injured herself last week while attempting to extract a wad of cash she had stolen from her boyfriend and hidden inside her rectum. So she took a wad of money and stuck it up her ass. Bobby... <laughs> If she'd cram things in her ass, he probably wouldn't. He'd probably just give her money just freely, I would imagine. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I had to go there. Oh, God. That is, that is. <laughs> I mean, oh, my. That is awesome. So Bobby Gully of Bulls Gap told a Hawkins County Sheriff's deputy that his girlfriend, Christine Black, had apparently fallen for a trap that he had set up for her that involved placing $5,000 and some drugs inside a medicine bag, and then he went to sleep. So upon waking, Gully noticed that Black was still awake and his cash was gone. Gully found Black throwing up a bag full of partially dissolved pills and asked her about the money. She admitted to him that she'd wrapped it up and stuck it in her rectum, according to Sergeant Michael Allen. According to Black, Gully was preparing to kick her out. She stole the money so she could find a new place to live. Black attempted to remove the money from her body using a toilet brush and a pair of tongs, but failed and injured herself in the process. According to the... Uh, according she failed and hurt herself? I don't know. Is, I, that what, is that what you said? I couldn't hear. I was what? thinking... I thought you said she fell and hurt herself. No, she failed to remove. Failed to remove. Yeah, okay. and she hurt herself. I mean, think she, about it. She's using a toilet brush. I thought you said she and, fell and hurt herself. No, no, and no. I was like, so the damn toilet plunger or <laughs> the needle nose pliers wasn't enough. She <laughs> failed and hurt herself. She not didn't only, get hurt there, but <laughs> I'm not, sorry. Not, not only does she have a wad of cash up her ass, now she's got a toilet brush. <laughs> That's some kicky shit, but I'm moving to Tennessee tomorrow. And some tongs. <laughs> yeah, feather oh duster. God. Feather duster. Damn. All right. So anyway, Ugh. according to the sergeant, she was bleeding severely and was transported to the Hawkins County Memorial Hospital emergency room. Doctors removed the money and handed it over to the police as evidence because her boyfriend said, no, 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 she can keep it. <laughs> I don't want it back. <laughs> Five grand, I believe I'll be... <laughs> <laughs> I would be doing some serious money laundering. Mm -mm -mm. Oh well, you know what? Think about it now. If you don't, if you don't trust banks, there's another storage alternative. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Mm. But now I would have thought that she would have, you know, shoved it up her up her cooch instead of up her ass. I mean, honestly. I mean, think about it. I've heard of women putting things there for safekeeping, okay? I have. That's the reason why they do, you know, uh, vaginal searches whenever, well, whenever they're doing Whenever they come to my house. Yeah, whenever they come to your <laughs> house, yeah. 
It's like, so whenever they get to your house, it's like, assume the position. I must search you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> yeah. That uh, reminds me of Robin Thicke and that picture that they've taken of him where he was hugging on that, that girl. And have you seen it? I, I hope not. Anyway, all it is is, you know, he's married, and we had this whole Miley Cyrus thing. So anyhow, there's this young socialite, apparently, that he was hugging. And where he was standing, there was a mirror right behind him. So what happened was they took the picture, and then somebody zoomed in and saw his hand was, was like, I think the middle index, the, the middle finger was, was holding on like a bowling ball. Oh, no. Yeah. Of course, then the next day, he and his wife were out and about because you know, suddenly the scandal was, ooh, he's cheating on his wife. Well, why? But just because he stuck his finger somewhere? Anyway, there's more to that story, but I'm not going there. So, uh, maybe the vaginal vault wasn't secure enough. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought when you said that. <laughs> oh, no, she couldn't put it in there because it kept falling out. Vaginal vault. The wad wasn't big enough. <laughs> This is exactly what I thought. Oh, my so. God. Hey, anyway. when you're on drugs, you do you do crazy things, man. Well, that's true. That Rick, is- Rick James said it best. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't know. Never had any. Don't plan on starting now. All right, so that's going to wrap that story up. Um, put a bow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the comments said, I bury my cash. I trust the earth more than I do myself. <laughs> yeah, I trust I trust the earth more than I do my asshole. Well, there ain't no way. <laughs> Things always opening up and talking. So I love this. There was one comment. Black attempted to remove the money from her body using a toilet brush and a pair of tongs, but failed, failed and injured herself in the process. The dude said, fuck, those are probably close to the top of the very long list of things not to stick up your butthole somewhere between scissors and a live eel. A live eel. I, I love reading comments on stories and stuff like that because you don't ever know what people's going to put, man. It's hilarious. One guy said, new, new a urologist who had two unrelated guys come in three hours apart who had urinary blockage and decided to use twigs to relieve the jamming. That was bad. A toilet brush? That is like a ramrod up the anus. Yeah. No no shit. (laughs) Not for a while. (laughs) Or a lot lot of shit. I don't know. It's probably packed now. Anyway. Oh, goodness gracious. That's a good start right there. I know. I know. Oh, ass humor. You can't beat it. (laughs) You can't beat it, but you can shove a toilet brush up it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You can't beat it with a toilet brush and a pair of tongs. All right. I mean, who doesn't have something? I mean, look, I'm getting that money out of your ass, woman. (laughs) Now, bend over, go get me the tongs and bring them back, and we're fixing to start working on you. You know, I think I I probably could have done a better job than she did. I mean, you know, if he really wanted the money. (laughs) Stick your fingers in your ears. I blow through her mouth. I mean, something. I, that would have been a better idea than sticking a toilet brush. I mean, if time was not an issue, I, I mean, you know, here comes some castor oil, bitch. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get to yeah. 5000 I'm going in. I'll tell you that right now. I might raw dog it not even glove it up oh. for five grand. i am just going to tell you all that right Somebody now. Somebody get me the snorkel. Hell yeah. I'm going to put some nose plugs, some oh. some goggles on, and I'm going in. I'll just tell you that right now. Oh. Of course, I never laid out $5,000 for it. She, if if I thought she was a drug head, I would have left some drugs for her that maybe I had. Well, or something yeah, like that. you have to wonder about the intelligence of the dude. I mean, he's like, well, I laid a trap for her. Drugs yeah, and five k. Yeah. yeah. All you right. Dumbass. <laughs> oh. like, that damn crackhead speed is something serious, buddy. Mm. <laughs> you can't catch them. So I know. Oh well. Just remember. If money goes missing in your house, <laughs> you, may, old lady's ass. <laughs> you may have to start asking some really sensitive questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's scary. Yeah, kind of reminds me of... Uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I know it wasn't Sesame Street because they'd never have anything like this. But Don't it, ruin my childhood but with, it, by putting ass it, play with Sesame Street. Well, it please. reminded me of something that I, I saw when I was very young, and it remind, it, it kind of looked like the cookie monster, except what he did is the way he ate the cookies is he sat on them. 
and then they would disappear. So really, yeah, and I cannot remember for the life of me where I saw that. I don't know. But they'd be like somebody was out there and they were eating a cookie, and then they laid the cookie down on the bench because they were going to go play with the birds or something, and then this this furry looking cookie monster like thing would come along and do 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 sit down, have this funny looking you know, look on his face, and then he'd get up and walk off, and the cookie was gone. <laughs> you ever had a cookie crammed up your ass? It, no. Did it make you make funny faces? <laughs> it, probably the money did, too. Yeah. Five grand. Mm. Okay, let's move on to something a little more serious, but still <laughs> still in the... <laughs> I don't know how you get more serious than five grand up the ass. I just don't get it. Well, I was, try- I was trying to segue into, you know, something that still is related to the anus, but... Um, this happens to deal with two lesbians, so, well, you know. Lebanese are my favorite. Le- yeah, Lebanese. <laughs> Damn Lebanese. <clears throat> All right, so have you heard the story about the bakery that refused to do a wedding cake for two lesbians that were getting married? Have not. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I can't remember exactly how long ago this happened. But this is kind of an update to the article, and it's on the blaze. Anyway, it's uh, the business is called Sweet Cakes by Melissa, and it's an Oregon-based bakery where they decided that they were going to refuse to do a wedding cake for a lesbian couple. And so then the lesbian couple, and, and this is what boggles my mind right here, and I guess because they're trying to bring this up under some kind of... Uh, um, Oh, damn it, I just had the word. Not racism, but um oh, starts with a D. Discrimination. Discrimination, thank you. Brain I just had a brain fart. I'm still thinking about the money up the ass. Um anyway, so they filed a grievance with the state of Oregon. And I'm like I don't really understand. I mean, I kinda understand the reason why they did it, but here's Here's the thing. It is my understanding that as a business owner, I can refuse service to anyone for any reason. If I own a restaurant and I don't like certain... Well, for instance, the restaurants, there's been several of them that have cropped up in the news over the last couple of years where they... <clears throat> have actually stipulated that you have your child has to be at least 10 years of age or older. Any children younger than that are not allowed in the restaurant. And, of course, they, they got some flack because of that. <clears throat> but I also understand the reason why they did that is because, you know, not trying, not trying to disparage people with young children, but as, as my wife and I know, and I know you've probably been in this situation, you, you go and... You go to a nice restaurant, you want to sit down and have a nice meal, um, <clears throat> maybe some good conversation with your partner or whoever it is that, that you're there with. And, you know, about 15 feet away, you got a kid over there going, Wah! Wah! How are they going again? Wah! I swear I thought it was a sound bite for a minute. <laughs> Damn, that's a pretty good baby cry right I know. I, I do it often whenever I'm begging for sex. Out of instinct, I don't. <laughs> I'm out. I'm so out. Oh, my gosh. Woo! All right, but no, seriously. I'm almost out of coffee. But no, um. so you're sitting there, and you can't enjoy the meal. And, you know, you don't want to really get ticked off because you feel for these people. <laughs> because, I'm going to... <laughs> Suddenly not hungry anymore. Okay. Um, you feel for these people because, you know, they're probably embarrassed, and, and they just want to enjoy a, a good time out, too. But I say all that to get back around to the point that if... If it's your business, you can refuse service, okay? Just like this business here. These people happen to be uh, Christians. And, of course, they say, we love everyone, but we simply do not wish to support same-sex same sex marriages. 
Therefore, we are not going to show that we're condoning it by providing a wedding cake to a, a gay couple. Well, all of the backlash, um, the, the lady's name is Melissa. She said she told the Blaze that she moved everything out of her shop in uh, Gresham, Oregon on Sunday, officially shuttering the business that she and her husband spent years building. Because they were getting so much flack from everybody. I mean, there's a, I believe there's a Facebook page that, was, that uh, popped up to boycott the business. Um, uh, let's see, I uh, believe the business had actually been um, broken into because <laughs> she detailed an, an eerie alleged break-in that she believes is likely tied to the family's very public battle. <clears throat> so he said, in May of 2013, the baker's problems went viral after she refused to make a cake for Cryer and Bowman's ceremony. Uh, the two ladies uh, involved were Rachel Cryer and Laurel Bowman. After media outlets across the nation picked up the story, the Kleins, Miss Melissa Klein and her husband, were inundated with angry emails and phone calls. In the end, Melissa said that this reaction resulted in a major loss of business, which, of course, you would expect it to, uh, to do. Quote, just the, whole being, <clears throat> just the whole being affected big time. What the hell does that mean, just the whole? I think she, anyway, sentence is not making sense. English. Just the whole being affected big time. I think she's got to confuse with the last story. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, in our wedding industry part of the business, the vendor's not referring us anymore, Melissa said, when asked how the incident impacted her business. We coasted it through the summer to see how it would be. We had quite a few wedding cakes that we had booked and people canceled. The referrals that we would get, none of those came in. In the past years, Melissa said that the family had a good cushion and that the majority of their money would come in during wedding season each summer. While this would carry the business through the winter, the stark reality was that the family's current financial situation and the, and the dearth of orders, I think that meant death of orders, meant that closing the shop was a necessity. As Melissa said, that she and Aaron were struggling to meet financial commitments each month. <clears throat> so, um, number one, Blaze proofread you need a proofreader <laughs> um, because there's some there's some grammatical and spelling errors in this article secondly i don't know how do you feel about this i'm kind of on i'm i'm kind of on the fence as i as i pointed out you can refuse service to anyone on any grounds but at the same time you better be prepared to suffer the consequences which you know if they're I fully support someone who follows through on their convictions. Okay, I mean, if they if they believe in their faith so steadfastly that they refuse to do wedding cakes for same sex marriages, knowing that it's going to impact the business and and probably even shut it down, and they're fine with that, there's no story here. It's, it's done. Yeah, that's but right. But now, if they come out and start bitching and moaning about the fact that Either they weren't treated fairly or all this other kind of shit. Um, you know, it's it's the old adage, you made your bed in it, now you made your bed, now lie in it or lay in it, however that's supposed to be. So what do you think? Um, I kind of agree with you. <clears throat> you. You've got to know, I mean, you've got to know your business. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, there's backlash and stuff like that, but... Who who are your clients? You have to know them before you make a decision like that. Right. And you know, I I can't sit here and say, do I agree with? It? I'm greedy. I mean, if you got a dollar out there, I want two. <laughs> I mean, I, I, really, everything I got's for sale. Yeah, I you mean, know. you know, if the dude comes in and he's got three pecker swinging, you don't judge. That's right. He's got his money spends just as just as well as anybody. Exactly. I, I'm with you on that. And so, I mean. It's like you said, if you're that strong in, in believing that it's wrong and you don't want their money, so be it. Yeah, but be but prepared. But be prepared, right, yeah. for the backlash, because it's going to happen if anybody gets wind of it, you know, anywhere except it, you probably won't see no backlash around here about stuff like that. But even around here, which I think that if something like that happened right here, I think it would be just totally abnormal and, mm -hmm. you know, 
four lesbian couple come in and be like, we want a wedding cake. and then I, So, I think, so what you're saying, you, we, we wouldn't have a lesbian couple around here getting married? No. What I'm saying is I don't think anybody around here would even maybe like, okay try to get one. How much do you want? How, oh. how big of a cake? How many? How many are you serving? That's what they wouldn't. I think care. they wouldn't care. You know, and and this town is so. This is the fucking Bible Belt, dude. I still don't think it would happen here. Really? Not in Tifton. I don't think it would. Oh, it'd be talked about and gossiped about. Oh yeah. But somebody would make them a cake, and that's my thing. Hell, I'll make them a cake. If, and, and I don't bake. <laughs> Everybody thinks they can make cakes these days. I know. So, and take pictures and, uh, you know, hell, there's all kinds of people to do this kind of stuff. Oh, that's true. That's true. So. Well, that, that, that gets back to, you know, if you're if you're not going to accept the business, there's probably someone right down the street going to do right. it for that's you. That's exactly right. So, so, I mean, I hate the fact that they got harassed about this. I mean, to me, this this is a true indication of the mentality of a good majority of, of you human mean beings. Who got harassed? The company or the couple, the lesbian couple? The company. Okay, yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean this this Facebook page, Boycott Sweet Cakes by Melissa. It um <clears throat> I said, uh yeah. Boycott Sweet Cakes by Melissa has over five hundred likes and has actively spoken out against the couple. Interestingly, Melissa's own business page had ballooned to over 7,600 likes during recent months. The baker fears that bullying tactics will be used to hamper her home business as well. Because what they were doing is they're transitioning to a home business. Um, maybe it's going to be catering or something. I don't know. They don't really Probably. just they don't really say. It just says transition to a home business may also hit some snags, though. Well, um, if you have... Any, any business sense whatsoever, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna turn away customers. I just, you know, mm -hmm. it's business. Don't take it personal. <laughs> it's it's not personal. It's business. Yeah, that's true. The ongoing impact is that in addition to losing their business, the Klein family has been impacted in other ways. Their children are now homeschooled, which is they should, probably should have been doing that anyway. A decision that Melissa said she made this year following the media firestorm that erupted. And in light of the bakery's closing, Aaron has gone back to work to help provide for the family. The harassing emails have stopped, haven't stopped. Melissa shared just a few of the messages that she received of late. One message with the subject line, racist maggots, read, people like you will burn in hell, you racist pigs. Okay, wait a minute. People like you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> All right. You and I are white. We're Caucasian. We are considered a race. I prefer the term honky. Okay, we're honkies. All <laughs> okay. right. We are a race. All right, we've got friends that are of darker color. They are a race. Um, you're male. I'm male. My wife is female. Those are genders, not race. Gay people aren't a different race. Liberty is not a different race, is it? No. <laughs> I don't, oh, you know. That's that's th ignorance is th what that is. Yeah. That's hate. That, that, that's hate. That's pure hate right there. Unadulterated hate. Yeah. An another one read, your homophobic rants will not be forgotten, and you will go out of business. This is the 21st century, assholes. Another one, do everyone a favor and fall off a cliff. One individual made it very personal. <laughs> Honey, it would take a lot to make your ugly ass look good. You are ugly inside and out. And finally, maybe your God will send you some cat food to eat when you're living on the street. There's some mean sons of bitches out there. I, look, I don't like collard greens, although my physique would indicate otherwise. <laughs> but... And if you don't like collard greens, I'm sure nobody's going to come out there and get you. <laughs> yeah, so, most people don't really understand that the camera that's on you is actually like 20 feet away. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate mm, it. Yeah. Anytime. Camera adds 10 pounds, and there's several of them in here. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there's several of them in here. So oh. um, I always heard lesbian cake tastes the best. I don't know what that means, but... You know I'll, what? I'll I eat a piece. I'm just saying. I consider myself a lesbian. A part-time lesbian. I'm, you know, honestly. Anyway, this sucks. I mean, it's it sucks for what they're having to go through. And it the 
to me, the entire situation sucks. I mean, they they made a business decision not to do the cake. All right, so they got to suffer the consequences. But on the flip side, it sucks that people can be so damned cruel. I mean, this this is like the cruelness of of kids on the playground kind mm-hmm. of cruelness. I mean, this this isn't the this is not human beings as adults. And <clears throat> they just need to be spanked. <laughs> I think I don't, oh. I don't know why people are that way. Mm-mm-mm. What's bad is I can be mean and cruel too, but deep down the side, way, way deep down the side, you know, I have compassion for people. Mm-hmm. And I deal with assholes day in and day out where I work <clears throat> at, whether they're working beside me or <laughs> customers of mine. Mm-hmm. But every one of them, every time an asshole customer comes in our place, it's like I look around to see who else is here. Tumbleweed rolls across, so Randy has to deal with them. Not a problem. You start hearing, yeah, yeah. When most people think, especially up there, kind of my demeanor and how I act is, they think that I don't take no shit from nobody, and I don't for the most part. Right. But a customer, yeah, they well, pay my salary. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm going to let them, you know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I sympathize for the people for having to put up with all the bullshit. But I sympathize with them also, the lesbian couple. Right. But, you know, did they, did they mm. rant? Did the lesbian couple rant about it to somebody? Well, the, I don't. Or I don't, did they just go tell Sally Sue, Sally Sue turned around and told. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how the thing became viral, but the last the last word on this so far is, uh, of course, like I said, they, they filed a discrimination uh, a suit, I guess, a suit or a complaint with with Oregon. It says Sweet Cakes by Melissa is, is still being challenged by Cryer and Bowman, and the business could end up being forced to pay thousands to the couple if the discrimination complaint is substantiated by the State Bureau of Labor and Industries. The civil penalty would potentially be one thousand dollar per violation and up to fifty thousand dollars for emotional damage for each person refused service. That right there is bullshit. That is. That is bullshit. I mean, unless it differs from state to state, that has no business being in the Labor and Industries Bureau. This is not a labor issue. This is not this is not a discrimination, a work discrimination issue. So it's like somebody's passing the buck. Yeah. This is I mean, let them let them go. Le- j- just you know, Cryer and Bowman, go find another fucking cake. The business is done. It's out. I mean, right. these folks are now f- broke. They're trying to rebuild their lives. You've done your damage. They were wrong. You were wrong. Get the hell over it. Move on. This is ridiculous. I, you know, look, it's 2013, and we should be a little more sensitive than what we are. But you know what? Not everybody is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I've always wondered from from a racism standpoint, you know, I've always heard the term colored for black people. Right. And my thought has always been, what if we're colored to them? What if what if black is the right race or the right color and we're colored to them? Mm -hmm. Hell, white's a color. Well, well, yeah, it is. I mean, I I never understood that uh, That the use of that word either. I mean, yeah, white is a co- we're colored, right? We're colored. Right. We're colored. I mean, we're actually cream colored, or or whatever the hell this is. This Paste, is pasty white. Yeah, whatever. some of us are more than others, but but yeah, we're still a color. They are a color. Asian people are of a yellowish color, but they're still colored. We're all colored. I yeah. don't get it. Yeah, I've never understood that. It makes no sense. I don't know. Makes no sense. Me either. All right, so. Dude takes girl out for first date. Did he trick her with five thousand dollars and some pills? No, no, oh, man, no. This this had to. <laughs> this was dealing with a cell phone, and no, it didn't go there. Uh, speak before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get your phone out. Go to the Google Play Store and look up. Type in. Oh Lord. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me go to it. Type in drill droid. Really? Yeah. Is it two words? 
I, I don't know. Just type drill. in drill. See what comes up. Droid. Does uh, it come up? Uh, there's a dental drill. A Nike training club. That's all I see. Why would there be an app for dental drill? I don't understand that. Deal droid. D-I-L. <laughs> Which makes more sense. Is it one word? Yeah, deal droid. Yeah, one L. Oh, my God. I have <laughs> no idea what this is going to be. Really? <laughs> I'm going to read the description. <clears throat> Hail to the drill do- deal droid. You can use it to get a nice little massage from your phone. You can also send. <laughs> deal- What's that say? I can't read it. Deal dro. Deal dro. Deal dro SMS to your friend. Which oh, was- I thought it was a high. Because it, it starts in, starts back SMS. Yeah. and Yeah. Uh, to your friend, which will activate the massage you picked for them. So I like this requirement: sense of humor and hypersensibility. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'll cut the camera off, I'm going to stick this somewhere and let you <laughs> send it to me. I'm not installing. And we'll let this. everybody at home figure out where it's at on my body. I like this. Although funny, it runs constantly and runs down the battery. Even killing with Task Killer doesn't last long. Not strong enough to do uh, nothing. <laughs> I'll stick with Bob and. Bob and RL, <laughs> God, never mind. I just wanted to read the description. You're going to the reviews, aren't you? How trashy does one have to be to actually stick a phone <laughs> up their cooch? Newsflash. <laughs> it's called a sex shop. Go check it out. Some... <laughs> just checking. I got I to gotta check these things. God. You don't ever know. Oh, and it's free. They're not, making, it's any, free. They're not making any money off of it. Oh, <laughs> I just thought I'd come across that one day. I don't know how or why. Sometimes I get on... Google and just search the apps and just go yeah. through them and scroll them and just see what I something that catches my eye. Oh, well, you know the Amazon the the Amazon App Store has a free app every day. Do they? Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting to go check because they're usually shit. A couple of that I've downloaded and looked at, and I'm like, mm, no, I get rid of them. All right. So anyway, a, a bad first date took a turn for the criminal after a man angered by his companion's refusal to pay for her share of the bar tab. Stole the woman's phone in retribution. According, according to authorities in London, Kishore Namala and Fakhara <laughs> Sultana, I'm sorry if I bastardized your names, <clears throat> met up at the posh Ruby Blue Bar in some square after connecting through the online dating site Zusk. Well, there was your first problem. Anyway. So, following two rounds of drinks, Namala began to insist Sultana help him out with the $84 bill. She informed the defendant that she didn't have any money with her, and she assumed he would be paying for the evening, Prosecutor Helen Thomas told the Southwark Crown Court. Sultana ended the date, but Namala followed her to the nearby tube station, badgering her for the money along the way. Tube station? Tube station. Don't, don't know. Oh, my. Okay, keep going. Uh, Concerned that Namala's increasing belligerence was putting her in danger, Sultana took out her BlackBerry cell phone to call for assistance, which at that point the defendant grabbed the mobile phone from her and ran off down the street with it. So then Sultana starts screaming, gave chase, and was soon joined by a pair of policemen. Namala ditched the phone and attempted to flee, but was ultimately chased down. He later told the cops he took Sultana's phone because she took my money but claimed he didn't intend to keep it and only wanted to hold it hostage until Sultana paid her share. Okay, number one. <clears throat> Maybe this is old-fashioned, but if you're going out for the first date, the dude should pay. He should pay. That's, my, that's, that's what I think. He should pay. Now, there's some people that don't agree with that. I mean, I was looking at the comments, and and, uh, this person said two things. One, the guy should always pay on the first date, and two, you should never assume the guy is going to pay. And then someone else said, what, is this 1960? But, I I mean, I agree. The dude should always pay. Yeah. It sounds racist to me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (sighs) Look, I've got five words. 
put out or get out. Oh God! <laughs> when you tell that story, what 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 I thought of is that uh, you know who uh, Bill Hader is? Hader Hader, a Saturday Night Live guy. You don't okay. want Saturday Night Live guy. Uh, yeah. Anyways, he's the guy has he's on these commercials with his phone going around plugging it in every ten steps, and because it, he's got a shitty phone. Oh. Well, the new one is he's getting mugged, and the guy says, "Give me your phone," and he hands him the phone, and he's like. What? And he takes his hand out of his pocket. He's like, it's just his hand. Obviously, it's not a gun. He goes, mm-hmm. oh, here, you can have this back. He says, no, take my phone. And he's like arguing back and forth and stuff. So that's kind of what I thought of when you said he stole. Because you said a Blackberry. Who the hell uses Blackberry anymore? Uh, in England, they still use them. Oh, really? Believe it or not. But, I mean, they're quickly dwindling, too. But <clears throat> I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I'm not a worldly man. I apologize. Well, it could have been a Z10. I don't know, which was one of the new ones. The, excuse me. In the U.S., we say Z10. In Britain, they say Z10 because Z is Z anyway. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm kind of you were such. I'm kind of worldly now. You know, I hang out with Brits. Okay. Not yeah. really. Anyhow, dumb story. Don't expect the man to pay, even though he should. I agree that uh. Of course, like I pointed, someone pointed out, four drinks for eighty-four dollars, and I thought New York was expensive. <laughs> Fuck that place. Yeah, right. What but it's of... near nearby to a tube station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love tube it. Tube station. A tube station. I figured that was a subway, but yeah, well, tube station is British. It's British. Just remember, it's British. <laughs> you sit around and practice your British accent, don't you? You do. It's okay. I do it too, occasionally. <laughs> My wife says, not Australian, you dumbass. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, hello. Hello, love. Good day, mate. And then I go in and good day, mate. There's certain words you can actually say that you sound more like um, Australian, but then when you tr- you start trying to say the other ones, you sound more British. British, and, that's right. That's exactly And then right. you got the whole, you got, you got Scottish, and then you got Irish, and I mean, <laughs> yeah. I... I I bastardize all of them. Have you ever been overseas or anything? I have flown over AC, <laughs> but that's been about it. Uh, but no, I've I've never been out of the country and don't plan on it either. I didn't lose anything over there. I don't need to go get it. I, I went over there when I was a senior in high school, going from the summer of my going into my senior year. There's a lot and of we, over there's where where uh, we uh, we went to um, England, um, Germany. Where else did we go? Now the truth comes out. What? I'm a spy. You're you a spy. I am. I'm an international man of mystery. Yeah, you're like yeah, George baby. Clooney. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. I'm <laughs> way better looking than he is. <laughs> He's a spy. He's got nothing on me. But uh, it was. Uh, it wasn't that rememberable. Really? Re- remember, memorable. Memorable. Uh, it wasn't that memorable for me. Um, it, as a matter of fact, it was kind of a blur. Now the plus was, I drank a lot. <laughs> mm. as a, you know, I, I had a fake ID, and they honored it over there. I don't know why. I think they just they probably didn't didn't care. give a shit. Yeah, yeah, it's just different over there. It's like, he's an American. Who cares? It's the first time I ever drank out of a stain. Oh a yeah, stein. a stain. And uh, I have a stain. Yeah, I, I used to have one. I think I've. I don't think broke. I've ever had anything. I, I've never drank out of it though. It's actually up on a shelf. Right, that's how mine was up on the shelf, just yep. for just for decoration. That's, that's it. That's pretty much it. So, but um, so I went there, Germany, and we went somewhere else, and we rode a train, aka a tube, <laughs> and um, <laughs> first time I've ever been on a tube. Hmm. So Randy went to <clears throat> England and was on a tube. I got a got a tube on my honey. So we uh we had a good time, but it's just so different from each place and like I said, we drank a lot and mm-hmm. we probably shouldn't have. We should have been supervised a little bit and we were, but we weren't. Well, you know, but, in Germany it's expected to drink alcohol for lunch. I mean, you drink yeah. on you drink, you <laughs> go to lunch, you drink, you go back to work. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean it's the norm. It's the norm. And and people drink all the time over there. But what got me is, as much as they drank over there, um, like two years later, I was in Canada, mm-hmm. um, and my, my yeah. eh, and them drinkers up there, ooh, they drink more. They drink more, <laughs> and I was like, holy shit! <laughs> and uh, with my my cousin who lives in De- like Detroit, Michigan, just a suburb of Detroit, 
was getting married. So we go up there and we go on a Friday night, we go out to a nudie bar over in Canada. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get to go to a nudie bar in Canada, do so. Um, it's, it's nice. I've only been up to the ones in Atlanta. Those used to be nice. Yeah, I used to. I used to. Get, I, I've been to the Gold Club, which I hear is. I don't guess it's there anymore. And mm -hmm. then I used to go to Boomers. Boomers was Boomers. awesome. Yeah, What's had that? some had some damn good hamburgers. <laughs> Fur burger, or hamburger. I, actually, yeah, well, both. both. But <laughs> yeah, they actually they serve food, which I think most Gold, of them do. Yeah, I mean it's a ten dollar hamburger, but <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, so we went to the to the nudie bar, had a big time, and just. You know, I'm just young punk thinking I can hang with anybody. No. No. They they got the best of me. We got in that morning like at 5. I woke up the next day and had to take my ACTs up in uh, up in Michigan. So I wake up that next morning to take my ACTs because I had to go to ABAC. In my, uh, not ABAC if I was going to Vital State and my damn SATs wasn't high enough. My SAT score was not good. So. Really? Like nine, so I was gonna say because it was good enough, but not to get into it. I was getting into journalism and it needed to be a little higher. So, because I, I thought ACTs were for the military, no, I was told ACTs were going to be a little easier and I blew the ACTs out of the water. Oh, okay, come in at five in the morning, woke up the next day, and oh, I don't know how and my, I had an allergy attack too during mm. the test. Mm -hmm. So, my face is swollen and it's not coming out everywhere. And nice, blew that jerker out of the thing. We ain't got my cousin married that evening. Went back to Canada that night. <laughs> <laughs> and celebrated. <laughs> yeah, man. So them jokers were just getting with it over there, man. I was like, golly, I cannot live up here. But have you ever been to Canada? No. Nothing mm -hmm. to do up there but drink. Oh, really? Yes, nothing. So, was that Siri calling? No. <clears throat> that was my mom. I'll call her back. No. Uh, did you tell her we're doing a podcast? She forgets. I understand. She forgets. Uh, I've I've told her that we do shows <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at seven o'clock. So and she forgets, but that's okay. She forgets or don't care? No, she just forgets. Oh, okay, yeah. Like my mom wouldn't care. She'd be like, "Oh, I forgot you was doing that." But hey, why well, I got you here? Um, yeah, yeah. I'll call her. I'll call her whenever we get finished here. I try to check in on her every day now. I'm sure. Yeah. She doing what? good. She all right? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. She's she's a. Uh, Hell, she rearranged the living room. I had to go out there earlier this week and fix the satellite. But got all that going again because I didn't want her to be without TV because that house can get kind of <laughs> yeah. quiet without anything going on. And But, uh, yeah, she's doing okay. Um, she's uh, She had a doctor's appointment Tuesday. And then they, there's got, they've got a schedule when they're going to take the finger off. But... Um, it's no big thing for her. She's like, she's got another one, her middle finger on that same hand, and it's actually kind of crooked like this. And she's like, I want them to take this one off right here so then I can put a glove on. <laughs> Jeez. I'm like, okay. You know, I, I understand. She can't really use them anyways. Yeah, she can't really use them anyway. And, and, I mean, the way they are. So. <clears throat> so she may have that one done one day. I don't know. It's not hereditary, is it? Um, That's the thing. Growing up, I had always heard that scleroderma only affected women, which I don't know if that's still true or not, and they really couldn't tell if it was hereditary or not. Oh, my. Because mom didn't know of anybody else in the family that had ever had this. And it had always crossed my mind, especially after Lee and I had, had a daughter, and I was thinking, great, you know, because it, it didn't, this didn't afflict mom until after I was born. So, you know, she she was in her, she was 21 or 22, something like that, whenever I was born, so. And you're not an only child. You, I am an only you child. You are an only child. Mm -hmm. That figures. Yeah, I know. You couldn't tell. Is Lee an only child? No, she's got a sister. She's got one sister. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. I didn't want to have just, a, just an only child, you know, so we wound up having three. There you go. There's nine years between me and my sister, so I was nine, obviously, whenever they had her, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, man, everything's cool. I turned, like, 16, and I started, like, realizing that, holy shit, man, I'm I'm getting the shaft. She's getting everything. She's getting everything. <laughs> so I've I've grown up, and I'm, hell, like I said, a while back on a show, I'm I'm barely grown. I mean, it's 
I'm, I struggle with it a lot, but I do it. When she turned 15, she got a brand new car at 15. Couldn't even drive the damn thing yet. She got a brand new car. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to buy my own brand new car and, uh, I don't know, I guess bitterness and jealousy and whatnot. And to this day, she still is the favorite and whatnot. Well, I met Leanne. She had Cameron. He was at like six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was in. My sister was like, just broke up with a dude, was single, just kind of not in a rough patch in her life, but mm -hmm. just kind of just wasn't as prominent now. Right. Randy was boomed. And all of a sudden, Randy's going to pop the question. Oh, oh, yeah. So Randy pops the question. Boom. I'm number one, man. It's like <laughs> I'm on top of the world. Um, I got engaged April, April-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, like two months, three months later, uh, my sister goes to my mom and dad, says, I'm pregnant. And my mom and dad are like, what? What? Yeah. So um, it may have been a little longer than that, but. So she has, uh, she gets married, has a baby, boom, Randy just doo -doo -doo -doo, falls right back down. <laughs> oh my God. Lower than he's ever been. So then obviously we just had the baby. And did you get elevated? Randy, again? No, Randy's down. Baby's up. Baby's up. <laughs> Baby's Randy's way down. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leanne's way up. Cameron's still way up. But uh, <laughs> Randy, Randy <who>? fell <laughs> even further. Yeah. So, Randy who? <laughs> but I still have a hard time, man, trying not to get pissed off at my sister because drop of a hat man my family just and she's divorced now and that makes it even even worse you know what and, and she plays it i mean yeah well without giving any kind of sense of away any sense of information because my wife would kill me but your your story tracks to me very similarly to her and her sister you know one being treated better than the other one one not having to pay for a car, stuff like that. And so it's uh, it's it's interesting how that dynamic works. And see, that's one thing that, That's one thing with our kids. We've never had that issue. Well, number one, we're not buying them a car, any of them. I mean, hell, they don't even have driver's license right now. My oldest will be 21 in November. Doesn't want to drive. All right, Tyler just turned 19. Doesn't want to drive. Now, that does cause some other issues, which I'm not going to get into, but... Um, you know, I'm not financially able where I could buy them a car. Right. I mean, hell, I don't even think I could help at this point. So we don't have that issue. But um, I just couldn't see us favoring one over the other because they all have attributes about them that make them unique and special. But one, not a single one of them is better than the other, over, you know, overall. I mean, two boys, one girl, love them equally. They aggravate me. Equally, the same amount. <laughs> well, that, yeah. So, um, well, and my wife, she's so she's so funny. She, what's crazy, but I, you know, I'm sitting here bitching about my sister and my family, but I mean, I wasn't without anything ever mm -hmm. in my life, right. and I, you know, I'm not going to say my family's well off, but my dad's worked his ass off for everything he's had, mm -hmm. and he expects you to work your ass off for everything you get, mm -hmm. me especially. Her, maybe not so much, but me especially. So he, he wants me to be like him. And I do, man. I go to work every day, and I beat myself to death to make very little money just to be poor. You know, Don't we I, all? I, I don't want to be. I just want to make enough money to be poor. Huh? That's how I want to be. I want to get out of poverty <laughs> and be poor. So American, Living the American dream. <laughs> I am. And like my wife almost broke down today and just lost it. And But, but anyway, so sh we're talking about just my how – my wife, she she sees pictures of me growing up. She's like, brand new bikes on your birthday. I mean, you you poor son of a bitch. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And oh, poor baby. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff is what yeah. she sees. Yeah. And she's like, you know, but then now she sees how my family treats me also. Mm -hmm. And now she's like, I, I see what you're saying. Like, I could be like... I don't know what to compare. World Trade Center blows up. Randy, my dad will blame me for some reason. Randy had something to do with this, and he, you know what I mean? 
some some kind of way he's got a friend who's in Al Qaeda and so I mean <laughs> just he, God. they were out drinking one night doing something stupid in college and yep. and this is what happens or some shit. That's how he said he owed him a favor and Right, you know, every yeah. everything to anything happens, it's my fault. And my wife was like, Damn, we we traveled at Christmas up to see my grandmother. Mm-hmm. We get out on the road and uh I, my wife, I, we had a bet between me, Cameron, and my dad, my my wife. How long is it going to be before something's my fault? We got to Atlanta. That's how far we got. <laughs> Atlanta. It may have been making. I can't remember. He started saying something. I don't remember exactly what it was because it's so common. It didn't stand out. Hell, it's an everyday thing. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, hell, Randy, it's your fault. I was like, see, son of a bitch. <laughs> I told him we 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 would be in Cordial, but I. It, just that kind of stuff, man. So my wife is finally like getting it. She sees now, yeah, because she, you know she was around my sister, but wasn't really around. Mm-hmm. Now we got a kid that my mother keeps, and so does you know my mom keeps my sister's kid too. So just kind of funny how how you treat it sometimes and the difference in age and right. I don't know how we got on all this shit, but I'm going to. I don't know. You went down one hell of a rabbit hole. I am. Uh, um, we, you mean to tell us you're a rope? I'm getting Haswell here. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> oh, I like that. I think that's what we're going to name it now. When we go off on a tangent, it's like, well, we just <laughs> we just Haswelled. <laughs> you just got Haswell. You just got Haswell. All right, well, how about we talk about the actual living, breathing human who wins the Publisher's Clearinghouse Prize of $5,000 a week forever. That is awesome. Now, the 5000 is not crammed up somebody's ass. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Hopefully he doesn't have to stick it up his ass it's every not time Ed, he comes It's in. not in Ed McMahon, is it? No, do what? No, he's Ed dead. And that's, not, that's, that's why I thought Publisher's Clearinghouse died, because Ed died, and I thought it was his Publisher, gig. No, he wasn't doing Publisher's Clearinghouse. He did... Um, what? He did the other one, the competing one. You remember... You remember you had Publishers Clearing House, and they always did like the $1 million, and then you had the one that Ed McMahon did, and suddenly they, they were doing the $10 million, and then Publishers Clearing House came out with a $10 million to match that. But he was always on the competing one. Oh, I didn't there were, know there were two of them. So uh, anyway, we've got, um, got this article here. It says, every time the doorbell rang when I was growing up, I knew without a doubt that it would be the prize crew from Publishers Clearinghouse on my doorstep with a big, fat check and that I'd be able to keep myself in Lego, Barbies, and Pixie Sticks for a lifetime. But the actual odds of winning PCH's forever prize, $5,000 per week for life, are about 1 in 1.215 billion. Now, to keep that in perspective... There's a 1 in 175 million chance to win the Mega Million jackpot. 1 in what? 175 million. Okay. This is a 1 in 1.215 billion. Oh, my God. So it says, as such, the doorbell usually herald the Fuller Brush Man or one of the neighborhood pals, and I had to find money in the lemonade stand. So just imagine the joy of a real, actual, living, breathing human who beat those seemingly insurmountable odds and had the real prize crew show up on his doorstep, complete with balloons, a giant check, and smiling faces. In Illinois, 26-year-old man is the youngest person to ever win the Forever Prize, a fact that may have been lost on the fella during the hubbub. Of course, when confronted with 20 people, a ginormous check, and a camera crew, anyone would be stunned. His sister was on cue, however, screaming, Are you kidding me? Nope. The man had ordered World War II magazine recently and entered the sweepstakes and said he, he didn't think he'd ever win. His mother had plenty to say, nothing that her son had, noting that her son had lost his job last year. It's just that, <clears throat> it's just that we live payday to payday, she explained. But first things first. He'll be buying a new car. Then, might we suggest a large frame for that life-changing check? <laughs> so, uh, let me see here. So, how old was this guy? 22. 20, no, 26. 26. I'm going to play the video. Well, for those who don't believe the Publishers Clearinghouse prizes are real, only Fox 2 has a scene this morning from Morrow, Illinois. That's in Madison County near Bethalto. Michael, are you Michael Miller? Are you Michael? Come on, Hi, out Michael. Here. Guess what? 
You've just won $5,000 a week forever from Publishers Clearinghouse. Are you kidding Come on out. Well, there she goes. She ran away. 26-year-old <laughs> Michael Miller, the youngest person to the win just the contest out. forever prize. Again, $5,000 a week for the rest of his life. He recently ordered the World War II magazine, and that's when he entered the sweepstakes. Miller, who lives with his mother, almost speechless, except to say he did not think he was going to win. <laughs> but Mom, who came back, had plenty to say. <laughs> It's just that we live from payday to payday. I don't have, I don't, I make minimum wage. It's just. Michael, do you have a job? No. He worked down there where I worked at, but he lost his job last year, Michael. He worked where, Mark? Well, that money will certainly help. He says the first thing he'll do is buy a brand new car. The look of shock is pretty priceless there, isn't it? <laughs> really? I mean, right? You know, yeah. you always wonder, okay, do the people know that they're right. coming? Is it? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that, yeah, he, he honestly, he's standing there, and you got these group of people, and the dude's holding this big cardboard thing, and he flips it around where he gets, and then the dude's like, <laughs> <laughs> the sister walks out and is like, are you kidding me? And she, she, she goes off with another group of people out there. That's so, funny. That is awesome, though. I, uh, I I just wonder if, I mean, you said he ordered World War II magazine or something like that? Yeah, that's what it said. I, I just assumed it was an old dude. I'm going to be honest with you. I really thought it was. Can you imagine? Is it stereotyping? That? And they picked him because... They, he's about to die. He's old. We're yeah, no, no, no. This is, this is a dude 26 years old just at, at the beginning of his life who is now making 5,000. Okay, can you do the math? What is 5,000 times 52? It's enough. <laughs> okay. I, I'll I, take it. I, I, I got to know. I got to know. I got to just know. Just barely more than what I'm making. Yeah. I hear you, dude. All right, that's uh 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 two hundred sixty thousand dollars a year. That's modest. That's modest. <laughs> Pull taxes out of that. Let's see. They're probably gonna ding him for thirty three percent. So that's uh eighty uh, eighty six thousand dollars. Ah, it's gonna be tough to live on one hundred seventy four thousand dollars a year. I don't know how he's gonna do it. Me either. Uh, Two words, double wide. Yeah. I'm telling you. Don't be buying that truck. You're not going to be able to afford it. Yeah. But if you do, come see me. I'll hook you up. Yeah. That's right. Tifton, Georgia, baby. All right. So that's cool. That was pretty cool. It's like, it's like a <clears throat> unicorn. You just don't see it every day. I know. Somebody went to win in the publisher's clearinghouse. So we got a 50-year-old man died Saturday after he apparently became the victim of booby traps that he set that he had set to protect his marijuana plants on his property. Says Albany County Sheriff Craig D. Apple. Sheriff's officials on Sunday identified identified did, 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 identified the victim as Daniel R. Ricketts, who owns property at a residence on Sawmill Road near Thatch Thatcher Park where the accident took place. He was driving an ATV in the backyard of his property around 2.30 p.m. Saturday uh, when he was nearly decapitated after running into a fine, nearly invisible wire that was among the fortifications set up around four large marijuana plants. The sheriff added the wire appeared to be the type used in pianos but he said it's unclear what purpose it served as a security measure other than being dangerous to someone driving an all-terrain vehicle or motorcycle. Other protections for the plants include barbed wire and a leg trap similar to something used to trap coyotes. He said alcohol may have been a factor in the accident. <laughs> <laughs> and where was this at? Um, this was in... I thought for sure you were going to say my Uncle Junior. Look. Albany County, wherever the hell that's at. This was on it's on a website, timesunion.com. Where is this? I don't know where Albany County is. Yeah, that's okay. There's probably more than one in this. Yeah. It's like I saw today, there's like three thousand counties in the United States and the majority of people live in uh, hundred and forty six of them. 
either 143 or 146 of them. My when I got family in Kentucky and my uncle, he we he li- they live on a river, mm-hmm. the Tug River, and it's sep- the Tug River separates West Virginia from Kentucky. So we were walking. Me and my dad. This was a couple of years ago. We we're walking down the riverbank. And we look over, and my dad said, what is that? I said, it's crops. It's a field. I mean, it, was, it wasn't very big. It was mm-hmm. just a few plants. He said, no, nah, but what kind is that? <laughs> and my dad has never been around. I mean, he's probably been around marijuana before. Mm-hmm. My dad's never drank, never smoked or nothing. He's never done anything. So it shocks me. Which is me. the reason why everything's your fault. Exactly. Yeah, he needs to, he needs to smoke some. But uh, it shocks me that he knows what cannabis is and mm-hmm. i'm like i looked over and I, he said i think i think that's dope <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said what i think it's marijuana i looked over and damn if my uncle ain't growing marijuana out there and i'm oh thinking my God. i just gave away the tug river i just I, <laughs> he has since moved okay so if you need to know his whereabouts i can tell you that too but oh. um he uh so he's got like rows of of marijuana plants and i'm like Holy shit. And so my dad was like, you know, all these years, I knew your Uncle Junior liked to drink. He said, I didn't know he was smoking, too. And um, come to find out, somebody had come up there and planted it. And oh, it wasn't his. Yeah, you know, my dad called the cops. It was like, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I said, Dad, you are not from here. Bullshit, I, I am from here. I, I was raised here. I was like, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but You're you not, don't live here now. You don't live here now. Yeah. No. I said, that could be belong to the sheriff or something like that. So. It was kind of funny. My dad just was like, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, and we don't mean that, like, that's cool. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, they, yeah, boy, that's dope. That's that's dope. So That's probably just, racist, too. Just kind of weird that my uh, my dad is picking out pot plants, and I walk right by him. Not that, I mean, I don't smoke pot. I should, but I, I won't ever wake up if I do. <laughs> I'm pretty chill and laid back as it is. So. Oh. All right, well, let's let's go to one more story. Let's go to one more story. This one is about the skyscraper that is creating a death ray. Yeah, that sounded interesting. Yeah, it's in London. It says there's a 37-story building in London with a reflective glass facade powerful enough to concentrate sunlight to the point where it has been blamed for melting the plastic of a Jaguar parked near it. It says they're going to have to think of something. I'm gutted. How can they let this continue, the owner of the now-melted Jaguar said. According to the BBC... 20 Fenchurch Street, a new building in London nicknamed the Walkie Talkie Building, has created a hot spot that has not only melted parts of the Jag beyond repair, but has also scorched fabric, paint work, and a bike seat in the area. A bike seat. Eddie Cannon said parts of his van were melted by the death ray. The van looks a total mess. Every bit of plastic on the left-hand side and everything on the dashboard is melted, including a bottle of Lucozade, whatever the hell a Lucozade is, that looks like it has been baked. Although the building developers are figuring out a solution to prevent any more smoldering casualties, they believe it might only be a temporary problem in the first place. So according to the BBC, the issue has to do with the height of the sun in the sky at this time of year leading them to believe it could be a non-issue in two to three weeks. Okay, uh, that's great. That I mean, that's fantastic. In two to three weeks, it's no longer an issue. What about the same time next year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, we got to put a, <clears throat> put a sign out here. From July until the end of September, don't park out here. Don't do anything. This entire area is off limits. Uh, yeah. That's crazy, man. It says, for now, the AFP reported that three parking areas have been blocked until a permanent solution is reached. The building is still under construction. It's not even completed. It's not going to be completed until 2014. And with that, Randy fell asleep. All right, let's get out of here. We... Maybe. What? Yeah. We forgot to talk about the joke of the week and... Well, we're about to. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I've been thinking about that all day. I hate to admit it. The you joke bastard, of the week? You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the joke of the show. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I got to get prepped. John... <laughs> John, 
John woke up one morning with an enormous erection, so he turned over to his wife's side of the bed. His wife, Heather, had already awakened, though, and she was downstairs preparing breakfast in the kitchen. Afraid that he might spoil things by getting up, John called his little boy into the room and asked him to bring a note to his wife. And the note read, The tent pole is up. The canvas is spread. The hell with breakfast. Come back to bed. Heather answered the note and then asked her son to bring it to her husband. Her note read, Take the tent pole down. Put the canvas away. The monkey had a hemorrhage. No circus today. (laughs) John read the note and quickly scribbled a reply. Then he asked his son to bring it to his wife, and the note read, The tent pole's still up, and the canvas still spread, so drop what you're doing and come give me some head. (laughs) Heather answered the note and then asked her son to bring it to her husband, and the note read, I'm sure that your pole's the best in the land, but I'm busy right now. So do it by hand. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We do appreciate everybody who has joined us tonight. Hyenas in the chat room, uh, as usual. Thank you for being here. We do this show every Thursday at 7 p.m. Try to start doing a pre-show around 6.30 to 6.45. If you got anything that you'd like to uh, weigh in on that we've talked about in this show or in the other ones, our voicemail number is 313-718-2557. Our email address is dnr at anero.tv. If you weren't able to watch or listen to us live, the podcast will be available on the Anero Media website, which is located at anero.tv. When you're on the go, you can find Anero Media on the TuneIn app as well as the Stitcher Smart Radio app on your tablet or smartphone, and you can listen to the replays as well as the live shows. Please find the show on iTunes and rate it. Give us some feedback. We'd love it. And you can also leave us comments to this episode or any of the other episodes at anero.tv. Randy, you got anything? Is that it? We're done? I've got the TuneIn app on my iPad, oddly enough. There you go. I did not know that. All right. All right. Well, until next week. Thank you all. I'll be a little better next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace out.